the preamble to this is that as we watch helicopter development, and you've watched it better than we have, you know that five years ago there were four major development programs in, in underway in the Department of Defense, right? There was the armed reconnaissance helicopter that Belt had won, there was the presidential helicopter that our friends at Lockheed had won. There was a, an emerging requirement for the CH-47 possibly to go to the Air Force, and there was the CH-53 Kilo Marine Heavy Lift, which we were fortunate to win. And for whatever reason, budgets, uh, uh, lack of execution, if you will, three of those programs are gone. ARH is gone. BH, gone. CSAR, canceled. Only one's left. We've got it, thank God, 53 kilo. But it, sends, it sent a bigger message to us at Sikorsky than just the fact that they had canceled the program. It said that at this point in the life cycle, it appears that our biggest customer is unwilling to invest major dollars in future technology. That's the real message it sent us. And so we said, as we've grown up in the business, we went from number four to number one company, okay, maybe somebody's got to break out of that. And that was us. And we started, and you just saw virtually the culmination of about a four and a half year process to build, develop, test the technologies for X2. And I want to thank the team that's here. A miraculous job, a small team, honestly, not a lot of money for what we asked them to do. And they built a magnificent helicopter that actually broke its last key performance parameter without its final piece of aerodynamic treatment. And we think if we put that aerodynamic treatment on the helicopter, we think we can get another eight to 10 knots out of that airplane. So wildly successful, but, but clearly not a product. Well, today we're gonna to introduce a new design coming out of Sikorsky called the S97 Raider. And the S97 Raider is going to be a company funded build of essentially the prototype that you see behind us. We are going to build two of these S97 Raiders. It will be like tactical helicopter in size, utilizing X2 technology. So it will be, and don't write this down, the S97 Raider LTH X2. It's the S97 Raider, like tactical helicopter using X2 technology. And we're gonna build this mostly on our, our own company funding. We have not asked nor received one dime from the federal government in any way, shape, or form. And we like that at this stage. Now we understand that the government is moving forward with an industry coalition to develop these kinds of ideas. And we will continue to participate in that coalition. But clearly, we want to go a little faster than we would assume any coalition would go. So this is what we're doing. And it's the next logical step, if you think about it, from a technology demonstrator to a prototype aircraft. The Air Force uses the phrases X-plane, Y-plane. So this is essentially our Y-plane. We had to base it on something. And so we based it on the data we had received from the U.S. Army for the Armed Aerial Scout Mission, which is an emerging couple hundred helicopter mission. But we didn't totally base it on that. And if we missed the aircraft by a couple thousand pounds, by a door, by a rotor blade, even did we miss it by an engine, it doesn't matter. This 9,000 pound <coughs> basic aircraft, which will be able to lift 10,500 pounds, is the basic start for Sikorsky to make sure we understand this suite of technologies and really what we think we'll do, not just for the Army, but for the Special Operators, for the Navy, for the Marine Corps, for the Air Force, and hopefully one day our international customers. 
And we're going to launch this. It's actually technically already launched. We have a team that's assembled under Sikorsky Innovations who are fully charged to build, design, and fly within 50 months. So that's within four years. And that will be setting other kinds of records as we approach that. I'll take a couple of minutes and tell you what we got here. And uh, there was a big party going up above my room last night, so if I miss a number, I will point to our engineers very, I didn't join it, I just stayed awake <laughs> because of it. So, he started the business end of the aircraft. Um, the aircraft is about 33 feet long. It's going to carry nominally two crew members. They're going to sit side by side. In the scout mission, the ability to look across and chat, it's hugely important. As opposed to sitting behind each other if you were in an attack mission. And I only speak from this much knowledge in that I was a scout pilot for many years and tested the current capability, the OH-58 Delta, so I understand the, the missions. So we're going to go side by side, full fly-by-wire. And the fly-by-wire gives us two opportunities to insert technology currently not seen. The first is the fact that we believe that this aircraft will have the capability to be flown by two pilots, one pilot, or no pilots. Same area. We're proving that right now on the black box, and we're going to transport that technology into the radio. The second on fly-by-wire is, as a pilot, I'm a fairly hand-fisted guy. And when I want to go up, I yank the stick. And the poor designers have got to design all this material so that when I yank the stick, nothing falls apart. What it does is it drives waste and weight into the aircraft because I really don't have to work. This helicopter with the fly by wire is something we call load limiting laws. So when I snatch that stick, the computer will say, We think we really know what you want. And it will limit the amount of loads you're allowed to place into the helicopter. We think we can keep overall weight of the dynamic components down 10, 15, even 20 percent by structurally aligning what we think they want to what we're going to give them. Because in this size helicopter class, as we all know, weight is a big, big deal. You'll probably ask us a lot of questions about the mission equipment package. And to be honest with you, we're not thinking too much about mission equipment packages yet. There'll be spaces for the FLIR, spaces for displays, but what's happened in aviation is the product development takes eight years and the avionics take three years. So if you pick avionics eight years ago, you've got three iterations that will have come through. So we'll bring in the avionics in as we need to. If you follow the airplane back, you can see it's going to be a composite. For those of you that care, it's a dual keel beam aircraft, like I said, weighs about 9,000 pounds. And here's where you have, we have some options for our soldier, sailors, airmen, and Marines. We'll have the ability in here, and it doesn't open, the other side does. We'll have the ability to carry six 320-pound loaded troops inside. The current capability has none in the Army, and in the special operations, they can carry four on planks outside of the helicopter. So we're going to put them inside the helicopter. We're also providing these small wings, and each wing will have the ability to carry a seven-shot, 2.75 folding bin aerial rocket pod, 50 caliber, or two Hellfire missiles. Now, what we're still challenging ourselves is, 
Why does it have to be sticking out like this? To get in and out of the battlefield. So once, I'm going to talk about some of the trades we're still doing. So while this is representative of what will be, how this flies to and from the battlefield, in a lot of our minds yet undetermined. The overall airplane is going to have about a 2.7 hour endurance, right on top of current capability. But the idea is, is if you're not going to carry these troops, we will build this aircraft to carry additional fuel and or second load of ammunition so that the mission flexibility is increased to the point where if it were all fuel, we think we could put five or six hours on the station. And if we carry a second load of ammo, remember, attack helicopters are designed to expend ammo in one minute. That's the design point. So if we could carry a second load of ammo, we get that extra second minute. But a very versatile capability, 400 to 500% what's available today.